Peace Dance Dance Dancer by Roy Henry Vickers and Robert Budd. Illustrated by Roy Henry Vickers. Flip the page when you hear the bell. This story comes from my village on the north coast of British Columbia. All of our knowledge was passed through stories, songs, and dances. This story is as old as the tides that rise and fall on our shores. Yet the lessons taught may be more important than a thousand years ago. One day, many years ago, children were playing in the village, learning to be good warriors and hunters. While many of the adults were out on the water fishing for salmon, the elders sat in their homes weaving and singing near the warmth of home fires. The seas were calm and the sound of children playing were carried across the water. It was a beautiful spring morning. The children decided to make a trap. A boy brought a bent wood sear storage box that an artist had made. A girl brought a small stick that she found lying amidst the kelp on the beach. The children worked together trying a cedar bark string to the stick. One of the boys ran home and grabbed some bread to put on the ground close to some bushes. The cedar box was placed carefully over the bread. The stick with the string held up the box so that a quick tug on the string would cause the box to fall and trap whatever came along to eat. The children hid behind the bushes holding the string in silence. The children watched and waited. They were learning the patience of hunters. Eventually, a coral came along and saw the bread, and carefully looked around for any sign of danger. The young hunters were very quiet and still, and the crow did not notice them. When the crow decided it was safe and the, the bread would be its meal, it stepped under the box and swished. The kids pulled the string and box, the box dropped on top of the crow. Successful trapping. The children should have set the crow free. Instead, they tied a string to its foot so it could not get away and pulled feathers from its wings. When they saw that the bird could still fly, they pulled the crow back and removed more feathers. Before long, the ground was covered with feathers and the crow could no longer fly. These children were not taught that we must respect all life. The skies darkened as clouds suddenly gathered around overhead. The spring breeze from the north West we call Gulex changed to Hoas, which means southeast winds. Southeast winds always bring a storm and rain. The calm seas turned choppy. The fishermen pulled in their nets before the waves got too big for their fishing canoes. The rains came. The Shimshan people of Kitkala are used to the rain. The name Shimshan actually means in the rain. Many days of wet weather are normal for those who are born in the rain, but the storm did not stop. Day after day, week after week, the storm continued. Waves crashed on the shore and pounded the village. Then floodwaters came. The water kept coming up and up, covering the beaches. Soon it would seep into the houses. The people realized the storm was not going to stop. Water kept rising and the people of the village were afraid. The people realized that they could not stay in their homes. Everyone in the village got into the biggest canoes. They had paddled to a higher ground. The canoes were thrown this way and that in the stormy seas. The waters were rising swiftly, but the canoes made it to the tall mountain not far from Kitkatla. The people carefully dropped their big anchor down the mountain top that was now underwater. They passed ropes from canoe to canoe, holding them all together. The strong people bailed out the water of the canoes as the rain kept falling. The old people were crying and praying to the chief of the heavens. They said, please have mercy on us. Bring back peace to the world. Please make the storm stop. But the storm did not stop. Finally, one of the elders fell asleep. When she woke up, she declared that to the others that I had, she had a vision. I see you return home. We have really lost our way. We have not taught our children love and respect. The creator is angry with our behavior. Then the people prayed and promised to the chiefs of heaven they would return to the laws of the ancestors of the laws of the love and respect. As the rains continued to pour, the chief of the heavens looked down at all the birds and saw that it could not land anywhere. Eagles, crones, loons, geese, herons, hawks woodpeckers, grows, and many other birds were flying around and bumping into each other's. The feathers were falling into the ocean. 
The chief of heaven said, There's no reason for the animals to suffer, because the people who lost their way have heard the people's prayers and promises that they would change, so I'll bring back peace to the world. The chief of the heavens felt love and compassion, and the storm ended. As the wind stopped, the sun broke through the clouds. The floodwaters went down, and fresh grass, flowers, and berries began to grow. The birds and animals made new homes. All earth was happy. The people were humbled and thankful for the lesson they had learned. After months of hard work, they rebuilt their village. They returned to the lodge of their ancestor, and to this day, the mountain where they anchored their, their canoes is still killed, called Hanker Mountain. After village life resumed, there was a meeting of elders and chiefs. They decided that a special song and dance would be performed at potlatches to remind people of the need for respect and love. The chief who had the gift of healing was chosen to be a peace dancer. The peace dancer shakes out eagle down to remind everybody of the waters that covered the earth when birds' feathers were falling to the sea. The end.